I don't know why, it just occurred to me that I should be filming some of these rare mushrooms that I've come across, but I should be, and so I decided that I'm going to do uh, rare and uncommon, and even uh, the oddly beautiful, or at least in my opinion, the oddly beautiful mushrooms of Michigan. Don't know what the title is going to be yet, but this is the beginning of it. This particular tree I've been coming to now for well over a decade. And I've been harvesting one specific species that's relatively rare. Now it doesn't bloom on this tree every year because I check it every year. It does skip years, but there are also times that I've harvested this particular mushroom off this tree on multiple occasions in a single season. Last year it was on the other side of the tree a few years before. It was almost too high for me to reach. This is a very large black oak. Now there are other places that I found this mushroom, but I usually only find one or two specimens a year. And I have seen it on smaller scrub oak in the northern part of Michigan. But where Don and I now are in southern Michigan, this big black oak is where I continue to harvest this mushroom. It's one of my favorites to fry and I wish I could find more of it. We have had a drought and I noticed the mushroom sprouting three weeks ago. So this mushroom has been here for three weeks and we just now got a bunch of rain and it hasn't gotten any bigger. So I decided it is time for me to harvest this. This is Fistulina hepatica. It's uncommon. In normal circumstances, this is blood red and will get very large and kidney shaped. The underneath of this will be a whitish pink. When you cut it in half, it'll be streaked like steak. It has several common names, beef steak, polypore, ox tongue. I've heard it called beef tongue, fistulene hepatica. It's a very, very portobello tasting mushroom. I just love it. It's one of my favorites. It's on Dawn's lower end of the list, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Sometimes when you cut it, you can really smell it, but you can see this steak-like color where there's a streak here. Well, these streaks will be diagonal in here and it'll look like you just cut into a steak. They're a very wet mushroom. They can get relatively large in good years, but because of the drought and because I've seen this wither away on me on years that I've watched it grow and experimented with it, uh, I don't trust that it's going to get any bigger. So I'm harvesting it for the skillet, a rare and very beautiful mushroom. Normally it is as red as these edges right here on top, but it feels like a tongue on the bottom. and it's velvety on top as well. Pink to white pore surface, red to dark brown on top. Very easy mushroom to identify. Prefers oak, grows on hardwoods. Let's go see another rare mushroom. This is the Velvet Foot Pax. As it gets older, this fuzzy brown color will fade away. It has a very thick, voluptuous stem. Usually it grows in groups and clusters. I think the reason I found one solitary mushroom is because of the drought that we're experiencing here in Southern Michigan. But it has an enrolled margin. A lot of times it'll become vase shaped some people would refer to it as oyster-like, but this particular mushroom is not an oyster. 
and this brown fuzz gives it its name velvet foot pax and as it ages this furriness will disappear decurrent crowded gills and it can have an oyster like top sometimes it can be off center offset when they grow in clusters and clumps usually on buried or dead wood the velvet foot packs this one I'm gonna call uncommon not necessarily rare. Let's go see another. We got really lucky, aside from the mosquitoes, which are bothering my camera woman, Dawn. And she's wearing a mosquito net. I probably <laughs> should be doing the same thing. The reason we got really lucky is because I found a very rare mushroom that I, I only get to see like once every three or four years. And we just happened to be shooting a video on chanterelles we have the false chanterelle which we don't like the term false anything so the latin name is hygro let me think about this it's a hard one to say hygro opsis hygrophoropsis that's it hygrophoropsis orantiaca hygrophoropsis orantiaca say that with me <laughs> I happen to have chanterelles because that's what Dawn and I are picking. And if you look at the tops of these chanterelles, they resemble the false chanterelle. Now the distinguishing difference, this has kind of a velvety top. It's not sticky like hygrosopy, but this is hygrophoropsis. Now this will have gills, whereas the chanterelle have ridges. Let's see if we can get a close up of these gills. You can see the blade of the gill when you cut the mushroom in half, but also it's vase shaped like a chanterelle. And decurrent or slightly decurrent gills. But one feature to really notice it's just how crowded these gills are. And when you strike them with the knife, they wave, they move, which demonstrates blades versus ridges on a real chanterelle. Now these yellow ones are smooth, so there are no ridges or folds. So I'm going to use a cinnabar chanterelle to show you the difference because the golden chanterelle will have ridges that resemble this. Actually, I'm going to put that other one in the light, too. Hopefully that sun isn't too bright. Now, a chanterelle has stringy flesh. And if we we're to take some of this skin and we peel, we notice that those ridges are part of the mushroom. They're not separate from the cap or a different part of the cap like gills are. Gills are blades, these are folds or ridges. Those are the major differences between Cantharellus and other genus of mushrooms. So finding the hygrophoropsis, we can see these really extremely crowded gills that wave. Nice, huh? I feel lucky, even though it's not an eater, I feel lucky to see a rare mushroom in Michigan. That's nice to find. Let's go find something else. Uh, this video is for educational purposes only. We're not harvesting this mushroom. I'm just gonna show you the ID features of it. It's a, it's a wonderful specimen that grows all over the northern part of the United States, um, here in Michigan as well. This is out west, it's called the Laughing Jim. Here in Michigan, we call this Gymnopolis lutus. Grows on dead wood. It has a yellow cap, orangish sometimes. It can be a little more orange than that, is what I'm saying. As it ages, it'll of course deteriorate and start to turn darker. The spore print is a rusty brown. You can see 
spores right here on this ring zone, which is near the top of the cap. This is a identification feature. Yellow stem, yellow gills, yellow flesh, yellow cap with a rusty orange ring zone near the apex. If you were to drop a drop of KOH on this, it would turn red. That is another distinguishing feature. This mushroom is active. However, I'm told it's not uh, that super active that a lot of people are hoping to uh, use and research. A couple of weeks ago, I was meandering through this woods hunting mushrooms and I seen a splotch of orange. It excited me and I thought maybe I had chicken of the woods, Laetoporus sulfurus. So I meandered that way and I looked at it and what was emerging was this brilliant, brilliant orange mushroom. And it didn't resemble any of the emerging uh, sulfur shelf mushroom that I'd seen in the past. So I did some research and I left it go for a few days and I came back and I looked at it and I thought maybe I had the extremely rare Hapilopolis crucius. But I didn't have my KOH with me to test it. And so I returned a couple of days later and it did not stain red like Hapilopolis crucius would. It turned red immediately, which excited me and then it turned black. So that changes that. The only other mushroom that I can think of that's in Michigan that could be this is Inanatus quercsi. I'm not sure I said that right, so I'll have Dawn put that Latin name on the screen right there where I probably butchered the word. But this is an Inanatus. It's a really rare mushroom. I've never seen it before. I've never seen the Hapilopolis crucius either. So either way, I was excited and it is interesting, as orange as this is, how someone could spot it across the woods and assume that they have found a layout of porous sulfurous or a chicken of the woods. And uh, lo and behold, it's a polypore mushroom, but it's certainly not chicken of the woods. And a rare mushroom nonetheless, and certainly belongs in this video. I thought it was astounding. The mushroom is so rare and I've never seen it before. Uh, so if there's anyone out there who can correct me on this ID, please feel free to do so. I'm pretty certain that's the only other thing it can be, being that this is certainly an oak log. And those two species, those two rare species, Apolopolis, Crocius, and Inanatus both grow on oak. Let's go see some other rare mushrooms in Michigan. Here is a beautiful and in, infrequent bloomer in Michigan. Out west, these are called pig's ears. On the top of this, you can see how it resembles a pig's ear. It's a clump mushroom. I call them violet chanterelles. See how violet that is? You can see the spores being deposited right here. If you were to cut this mushroom in half, when it's fresh, you'd see this really beautiful violet hue with white specks in it. As this mushroom gets older, it'll turn a cream to white, the flesh will. These can get quite large in clumps, and the tops of this can fan out. The violet chanterelle is an edible mushroom. It's not a chanterelle, it's a gomphus. It's a delicious, almost purple mushroom that is pretty rare in Michigan or at least infrequent. Let's go see some others.
Here's a mushroom that isn't necessarily rare, but it is in, infrequent, at least in my area. This is Sarcodon ambricatus, the shingled hedgehog, or the hawkwing. It doesn't have gills or pores, but it has spines. Usually if you do a taste and spit test on this, it's pretty bitter. Some people do eat them when they do a taste test and it isn't bitter. They take them home and fry them up. Uh, I talked to some people in Colorado who said that they've never had a bitter one out there. Uh, I've also seen people in Ontario have eaten these. It's infrequent in my area. I think it's a beautiful mushroom. It's usually got a cream to grayish fertile surface, the spines. And sometimes this can take on a maroonish or red-brown hue. But the cracked top looks like shingles layered over itself, which makes it stand out. The hawk wing. Let's go see another mushroom. A beautiful, beautiful blue mushroom that is found in Michigan. I'm not going to call it rare, but it is certainly infrequent. I know I have only just recently found this mushroom. After years and years of stomping in the woods, I've never happened upon one. This is Lactarius indigo group. I personally think it's one of Michigan's most astounding mushrooms. Relatively easy to identify if you slice the gills or break the stem. It will ooze not a lot, but a little bit of blue latex substance and that'll stain on the gills kind of a blue green the top of the mushroom sometimes can look powdery white and as blue as it is it's amazing how difficult it is to actually spot I wanted to leave you guys with this beautiful blue mushroom of Michigan for this video of part one and I look forward to getting part two of the rare and beautiful mushrooms of Michigan to you soon. Safe and happy foraging from David Michael and Dawn Marie.